everybody we are back well actually it's not we it's just your boy marcus johnson i'm here doing a little inside zone breakdown today so we can do a little check out this inside zone run game that the raiders have been introducing a lot more trying to get some more vertical push you know josh jacobs had a big year in that and we saw that a lot and especially in the first two preseason games we're going to feature of course this last preseason game we just watched we see uh you know check out some of these raiders inside zone designs because some of them are pretty cool and they set up some some good runs for you know josh jacobs who averaged 4.8 yards per carry last year running inside zone so we're going to see some of these designs and some of my favorite ones and we saw most of them in this last preseason game so we're gonna go ahead and check that out and uh you guys you guys already know what to do subscribe 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 you know check out the merch leave it leave hit the like button if you like it hit the dislike button if you don't like it you guys don't know everything to do so go ahead and make sure you guys do that for us here we go all right so for this first play we got inside zone lead week so, you know inside zone down downhill attitude run you know it's the foundational piece of this raiders offense at this point in time and the lead week is you know especially uh, a big play for them, especially with Alec Ingold and Josh Jacobs. You know, and the, the additional lead blocker allows the offensive linemen to hang on their double teams a little longer, so you know, so they don't have to press front side for the linebacker. Instead, a backside linebacker will be pursuing over the top, heading towards the double team. So it always, you know, kind of allows the linemen to hold their blocks a little longer because Alex Ingold joins with them and becomes that six blocker all right so let's go ahead and watch uh the raiders do this in week two the preseason right so we got bj emmons as the running back then you got gross shrek at the fullback position all right and so with inside zone what you're gonna watch is the running back is gonna attack the weak side a gap and you know weak side strong side the strong side is usually the side of the tight end so when you see a tight end that's when you know that's the strong side. The opposite is the weak side. Inside zone, they start off either attacking the weak side A gap, right? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and run this because this is gonna be an excellent run from BJ Emmons. All right, so let's go ahead and run this. All right, we're stopping right here. So I want you guys to watch a couple of things on this play. So BJ Emmons, his eyes are towards the weak side a gap right so this is like i said this is inside zone so most of the time they open up to the weak side a gap all right so look where emmons eyes are pointing to right so he's gonna lead these linebackers towards that a gap right with his eyes this is some some really really good running back play so let's go ahead and finish this off right you kind of see them flowing to their right and bj emmons left but emmons sees it right and he sees where the hole is opening up on the strong side of the a gap so he's about to hit that a gap with a good burst and a great cutback he sets it up that's a great run but that you know that's that's the, you know one of the raider staples you know inside zone lead week all right this one is one of my faves this one's called inside zone slice bluff all right inside zone slice bluff which is basically inside zone split zones so are familiar with split zone this is a inside zone version of split zone all right so bluff action so there's a bluff action here from the wide receiver and what that does it removes the box player right and it widens the defensive end for easier slice block or a split zone block widens the c gap right in a, in a kind of if there's a, a defender that is you know over you know where we see here darren waller or you know and, and it's a corner that's playing him basically what happens to that wide receiver it takes takes them out of that c gap too so if the defensive end crashes right they're able to make that block that c gap opens up and there's nobody there because he's taken out of the fit right so it's a, this is a great design so we're gonna watch them run this okay all right so see so you right here you kind of see the action there from the bluff right it makes it takes the corner out of the play so the corner he's not going to be able to fill that gap 
where the nickel corner usually would be able to, right? The nickel corner usually would fill that fill that gap. You know, you guys listen to us. You know, sometimes there's a lot of run defending that goes with playing in the nickel, and he's supposed to fill that gap, but now he's taken out because of Darren Waller, right? And then here comes Foster Moreau to make the big block. This leads right to a touchdown. Opens the C gap. See that? It's just beautiful, beautiful design. And the Raiders average 6.2 yards per carry on this run, right? So this is one of their, their big inside zone runs. It's inside zone slice bluff. So now, you know, we got the same formation right here against the Rams in week two, right? This is gonna be the same design, inside zone slice bluff, right? So we get the same type of look and we try to get the same type of movement here. But this is, this is a little different. I think uh, BJ Emmons doesn't read this one correctly. So we'll go ahead and run this real quick. As you can see, right, you kind of can see, you know, the defense end, he's crashing. There's really no nickel player right here to kind of take them out of the fit with DJ Turner. But there's a little bit of a wrinkle that John Gruden adds here in the preseason that, you know, might be used by somebody like Marcus Mariota. And you guys could kind of see this afterwards. But I do want to show you that, you know, Derek Carrier, he's going to that defensive end, right? But BJ Emmons, he doesn't try to get back to the C gap. Like you usually like to in split zone, he kind of just goes forward. So he doesn't read this run correctly. But let me run this real quick. I'm gonna show you guys something. You kind of see at the outside out route that's being opened up right there, right? Just because the defensive end crashed, you know, Nate Peterman, he maybe could have held this and then hit DJ Turner for a touchdown. I don't know if that's added into the play, but that's just me guessing here, guys. Right, so we see this backside. Yeah, BJ Emmons does not read this correctly. He's blocked up pretty well. I mean, if he, I mean, if he was patient and tried to come backside, he he might have got something there. But uh, there's nothing for him there. All right, let's get to the next one. Right, we get a little zone read here. We get a little zone read, right? So zone read, inside zone read. I mean, you guys kind of, you know, it's basically inside zone with the quarterback. He's reading the defensive end. He's deciding whether he wants to keep that football or hand it off to Trey Regis based on the defensive end crashing, right? So the defensive end doesn't crash and stays. He's going to hand that ball off to Trey Regis. If the defensive end crashes, he holds on to the football, right? And, you know, takes it around the corner. And we're going to see a better version later on, but I don't know what Nathan Peterman is doing here. But, you know, Simpson and Leatherwood have some awesome blocks here. So we're going to go ahead and check this one out. You go stop it here you see the defensive end is not crashing right so when we see that opening up for the inside zone right he should hand this ball off but i don't have no idea what peterman's thinking here i, 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 I this is crazy I, I, dude I, what is he doing is he trying to take mario to job it's kind of feel like it's about to happen because i mean <laughs> he's trying to show john gritty's mariota i don't know what's going on here guys <laughs> don't know don't know. Let's, let's, let's go back. I mean, what, what is he doing here? What is he doing? Like, like, it's a touchdown. Look, look at, look at Regis. Regis is walking it. And then look him turn around. Like, what the hell are you doing? What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> wild, Peterman. You're wild, bro. You're a wild guy. All right. So let's let, let's watch him run this correctly, right? So you know, this is a a, a better version here of the inside zone read. So you'll see. You know, the defensive end, he crashes hard, right? Peterman sees that, right? Pulls it, able to get a big play. So we saw a better version of that. So that's that's something that Mariota might be running the, in the red zone, the inside zone read, right, guys? So uh, that, that's basically inside zone, you know, from, from this past game. You know, we saw a lot of the inside zone, especially with uh, Nick Martin in that, in that game. It was not as much Andre James, right? So Andre James, you saw a lot more outside zone the week before. So, but, I mean, they're, they're going to be want to be an outside zone team. But the inside zone is also something that Josh Jacobs is very good at. And it's going to be very relevant to this offense. And it was very basically a staple last year. And you can kind of say maybe it was personnel. But is going to be part of this offense. I mean, they did run some inside zone with Andre James in there a week before. So I would expect more of that going forward. All right, guys. So. 
Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the like button. Make sure you, uh, you know, go check out the merch as well. Go get you a sweater. Get whatever you need to get. Uh, we're here. We're here for you guys. So, uh, see you later.